Hey guys, this is Joshua and Parkin. Before I start this video, I just wanted to give you a little announcement of what I'm going to change in my channel at the moment. First, I'm going to change my name from Joshua One Parkim into Parkim Music, so it'll be easier for you guys to search it on YouTube. I made Parkim Lectures for Young Teens or High Teens, so I probably have written or swore a couple of curse words in one of my videos, but I have recently realized that there are a lot of young audiences watching my videos. Thus, I wanted to apologize to anyone who are easily offended, and also I will decrease the difficulty of the educational level of these lectures to suit for these young audiences. Nevertheless, thank you for watching and enjoying my videos. Also, please subscribe and share it on any social media that you're using, then I'll be motivated to create more content for you guys. As always, take care. It's lecture time! Why do you have to know how to read the notes? Or, I don't want to read the notes. I don't even want to know how to read the piece of shit! I don't want to play. Or, there are too many symbols I don't want to know! Or you could just crack your head open and die. But I don't want to die! Now let me ask you this. When you're teaching a child of an English language, what are you gonna begin with? Are you gonna toss them a book of William Shakespeare or toss them a book of Charles Dickens? They don't know how to read. How do you expect them to know how to pronounce a specific letter? Music is just like a language. Basically, when you're learning a, a language for the first time, you have to know what the letters are. You have to know how the letter sounds like when you're pronouncing these specific letters. You have to know how it pronounces when you say this particular word and when you use this particular word, either that's grammar, vocabulary, or any sort of aspects of a language itself. And then, that's when they know how to write or how to read English. Hmm? I'm not just talking about English, I'm talking about all the types of languages. So, it's going to be the same aspects of music. So, in music, the first priority is know how to read the music. So in this lecture, I'm going to teach you how to read the musical notes on the piano. So as a music teacher, I tell them there's three main priorities that you have to keep when you're playing a specific piece of music. One, beat. Number two, rhythm. And number three, pitch. Now I'll explain. When you're playing with a group of people, or when you play with orchestras, there's like 50 people, or 60 people, or whatsoever. The question is, when do you know when to come in? When you're playing a piece of music, how do you know that this is your point to start? You don't. Unless if you know what the beat is, because it gives you that particular pulse. The rhythms. This is a brief, in an American word, double whole note. Semi-brief, whole note, minute, half note, crotchet, quarter note, quaver, eighth note, semi-quaver, sixteenth note, demi-semi-quaver, thirty-second note, hemi-demi-semi-quaver, sixty-fourth notes, semi-demi-hemi-demi-semi-quaver, or quasi-hemi-demi-semi-hemi-demi-semi-quaver. <laughs> but at the moment, let's just talk about the semi-brief, the minute, the crotchet, and quaver for this lecture. In piano, there's two types of clef that you have to look at. One is a uh, treble clef, and the other one is the bass clef. So, when you play with a treble clef, it's basically the higher register of the piano. So basically, you have to play with your right hand. And on this hand right here, which is your left hand, it's going to be the bass clef. Now, the word bass is exactly the same, not the same word, because it's a different spelling. But anyways, this bass is kind of like the same way as how you use with the word basement or the base of a cake. And so this bass is gonna be the low register of an 
instrument. Ah, a grand stave. A fine parallel line indicating a musical notation. In the piano composition, it usually has two stops, so in total of ten parallel lines. And there's a space in between the two stops. You have to look left to right to see what are the notes that you have to play in a specific order. As you might know, pianos have 88 keys. Actually, some pianos like the, the Bizzardorfa or Stewart's and Sons, but uh, yeah, they have more than 80. But still, pianos normally have 88 keys, so let's just keep that in mind. Let's not, not, not get things confused, please. As I said before, the treble clef is a higher register. Thus, it'll be at the top stuff. And you'll be doing the same thing with the bass clef when you can put it at the bottom. Now let me just tell you this one. Uh, the treble clef actually has a melody. It's known as the G clef. And the bass clef is another name for NF clef. So, I'm gonna give you a, bit of, a little bit of a, uh, uh, a reason why it's indicated that way. So basically, let me start off with the bass clef. So, the bass clef is another name for an F clef. Why? It's because the bass clef kind of looks like a shape of an F. Doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, but it's still, it's still an F clef. It's still indicating the F. As you can see, this bass clef is specifically pointing at that top second line. You see it right there? This top second line is an F. So, let's see the entire structure of this musical score. If that note is an F, then what would the other notes be on that bass clef? Let's take a look. If that's an F, and if you can raise it up, it'll be G, A, B. Huh. I see. Then when you go down, let's go back to F again, because that's, what, that's the note that we know so far. If you go backwards in the alphabet, it'll be F, E, D, C, B, A, G, F. Huh. And if you look into this entire score, we can clearly see what's the specific name of each of these notes are. So it's exactly the same scenario for the treble clef. The treble clef is another name for a G clef because the treble clef looks like a shape of a G. And this treble clef is pointing at that bottom second line, meaning that this bottom second line is a G. So if you go one back from that G, that'll be an F. One step back, an E. And one step back, a D. So let's start from G again. Let's see the rest of the notes on that stop. G, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. But then when you're going out of the stop, for instance, when you want to go lower than the D or higher than the B, in that middle right there, that note is a C. But then how can you know that this note is a C? Then that's where this thing called the ledger line. And please, 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 please stop with the acronyms. Don't need that kind of garbage. Great big dogs fight animals? All cows eat grass? Of course they eat grass. What do you think, they eat babies? Of course they eat grass. They're just gonna be sitting in the corner and be like this. Watch your rocket out, mind your business. So I'll tell you why it's not good for you. It's because you are interrupting your memorization structure. And every time, whenever you're looking for the name of the note, you have to use this acronym. Thus, it keeps on interrupting your concentration and it even wastes your time. Eventually, when you become a professional musician, you will just read the notes with photography memory. Let's start off with the rhythm first. So here's a given rhythm. Now we have four bars. The first bar consists one crotchet and four quarters. The second bar consists three crotchets. And they basically do the same thing with the rest of the two bars. Let's all remember that crotchet has one beat. And the quaver has half beat. So one beat consists two quavers. Three crotchet beats in the bar, so we have to count as one, two, three, one, two, three. Hmm. Not 
not so difficult, isn't it? Now let's get this same rhythm and put them into pitch. G, C, D, E, F, G, C, C, A, F, G, A, B, C, C, C. Okay. Yeah, that doesn't sound very difficult, isn't it? So now let's try this on the piano. Let's first remember the rhythm and let's get this start. Does this sound familiar to you? Wasn't that easy? Yeah, so next time when you're reading a piece of music, just do your best to know what the name of the notes are. And then if you remember what the rhythms are, what the beat is, you will play anything you can. Now, here's a new challenge. I want you to try to play this. If you have any other topic that you want me to talk about, leave a comment down below. And I'll see you in the next lecture. I already have a lot of comments right here. Let's thank you so much for this topic. Thank you. Wait, what? I just got kicked out. What? Yes, thank you for your suggestion. I'm working on it. And might chill out, bro. And my name is Joshua Wampaki. As always, take care. Bye.